All righty, so here we go. Um, this is section 2.5 in the David Lippman book about absolute value functions. And we get to write an equation for this uh, transformed absolute value function. So normally the vertex for these absolute value functions are at the, at the origin. So I see that this one has been shifted right one and up two. So I know that's going to be... Um, Let's see, it's going to be, let me go to a black ink. It's going to be x minus 1, because it went right 1, and then up 2. But it's also been reflected around the x-axis, because normally these open up and this is open down. And the other thing that happens is usually with an absolute value function, they go over 1, down 1, over 1, down 1. Or in this case, it would go down. And same thing on the left, right? And so I see... I see it's going over two and down one. So that's half. So this is going to be a vertical compression by one half. So that is actually all you need to do. And there's that absolute value graph. And then we get to equations. And visually what's happening is, is this. Um, I always do this because solving equations didn't make much sense to me until somebody told me that these functions of these uh, equations have graphs with them. Um, so really I've got an absolute value f of x equals the absolute value of 2x minus 3. And then I have this other equation, uh, g of x we'll call it, equals 8. And I want to know where those two lines intersect. So where those two functions intersect. So um, what do I do? What can I do here? Well, I can rewrite this thing. And if I factor out a 2, uh, x minus 3 over 2, or 1 and a half, and then an absolute value of 2, because it's a product, I can just take the absolute value. Because if I had the absolute value of a product, that's the same as the product of the absolute values, right? So. I, I, absolute value of 2 is 2. So I can just bring that out. And that way it looks more like a transformed graph. Pretty easy. I see, I see a function that's been shifted. I've been, it's been shifted right 1.5. And, and it's stretched vertically by a factor of 2. This isn't what you're going to do to solve it, by the way. I'm just doing this to give you a picture. So I know it's been shifted right 1.5. And let's see, I don't think I want to write in all those, uh, all the way up to eight. I think I'm going to cheat a little bit here. So it's been shifted right one and a half. And then instead of going over one, up one, it's going to go over one, up two, over one, up two. So this graph looks something like this. And I want to know where does it cross that line? y equals 8. And that's what I'm trying to, trying to solve. So I see there's going to be a positive answer, some x here, and I see there's going to be a negative answer over here because it's across the y-axis. So there's going to be two answers. So when we solve these, we need two equations. Uh, certainly in this case, we'll need two equations. So with that in mind, if we need two equations. If I've got the absolute value of something, suppose I don't know what that something is, and it's equal to some number, I know that that constant, that well, not constant, but I know whatever's inside the absolute value has to be equal to the negative of that constant. It also has to be equal to the positive of that constant because I know the absolute value. Suppose it was just x. Suppose this is the absolute value of a, x equals 8. Well, I kn would know that x could equal negative 8 and x could equal positive 8 because both those have an absolute value of, of 8. So we've just got this other stuff going on in there that we get to deal with. So that's what we'll do is we're going to write two equations. We're going to say 2x minus 3 equals negative 8 and 2x minus 3 equals positive 8. If somebody's going to make a mistake with this, they usually forget to write the second equation. So just remember, there's, there'll probably be two answers for any absolute value equation. So to solve these, I'm going to add 3. I'm going to add 3, do them separately. So 2x equals negative 5. And then I'll divide by 2, so x equals negative 5 over 2, or negative 2 and a half. And that checks that I, I thought I was going to have a negative number, a negative answer. Remember that graph? 
And then for the other one, we're gonna say 2x equals, let's see, I'll add three, add three, so it's 11. X equals 11 over two, we're five and a half. And that is, those are the two solutions. That's the two places where this function crosses that line, y equals eight. Now what's different about this one is it's not just an absolute value of something equals a number. So we'll want to solve it. What we need to do first off is isolate the absolute value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract four, subtract four from both sides. So negative two times the absolute value of x minus one equals negative three. And then I'll divide by negative two. So x minus absolute value of x minus one equals three over two. Now before I continue, I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna wave a flag at this. So what, if, what if this were just positive two right here? And then I divided by the two that would give me the absolute value of x minus one equals negative three over two. Well, I know from a graphical standpoint, this absolute value function here is shifted to the, to the right one and it looks something like this. Is that graph ever gonna cross this line negative one and a half? I thought, because it opens up. So if this were the situation, there'd be no solution. In my open math, they like to say DNE does, does not exist. So isolate the absolute value, and then if you have it equal to a negative number, there's no solution. Now, with that said, sometimes what they'll do is they'll do something like this. They'll say, they'll say, uh, what if they said negative 10 here? So what if, uh, let me do some erasing here so I can. What if they had said uh, 4 minus the absolute value of... Uh, of uh, two x, uh, two times x minus one uh, equals negative 10. Some people will stop and say, oh, well, you just said it's equal to a negative number, there's no solution, but I haven't isolated the absolute values. And if I were to do that, I think I would get the absolute value of x minus one equals positive seven, in which case there will be a solution because the absolute value is equal to a positive number. So you have to isolate the absolute value first. Okay, so I'm going to now write my two equations just like before. So uh, um, x minus one equals three halves. I I'm gonna write negative one and a half just because I've got the negative. I usually don't go to decimals, but in this case, I think it's, it's, it'll make it easier. And positive 1.5. And so I'll add one to so x equals negative one half or negative 0.5. And x equals, I'm gonna add one, x equals 2.5 or two halves. And those are the two places where it works. Now, I'm, I'm a firm believer in checking your work in the original question to see if it works, see if it checks. I don't always do that, I'll admit, but in this case, it's something, a place I probably wouldn't do that. You'll see, I'll warn you ahead of time here when we get to that section. Okay, so that's, a, that. so hope you see that um, with this question, it's, do you see the absolute value is isolated? and it's equal to a negative number. So the solution should be no solution, right? No solution, because I can't have an absolute value be a negative number. Now this one, the horizontal intercepts, well, it is, it is a function, right? We could graph it and find out where it crosses, but if the horizontal intercepts, that's where, that's where y equals zero, right? So it's the, basically where the x-intercepts are. So what I'm gonna do is basically all they're asking me to do is to solve this equation. Uh, what am I doing here, just a minute. X minus two minus three. So let's just, now we'll do the same thing, isolate the absolute value. I think I'm gonna add three divided by five. And just another equation, X minus two equals negative 0.6. And x minus 2 equals positive 0.6. So add 2, so which means i got to subtract, subtract 2. Here, I don't want to write plus 2. x equals, let's see, 2 minus 0. 0.6 is 1.4. And there we're going to add 2, so x equals 2.6. So the x intercept, the horizontal intercepts. Now, yeah, got to be careful of the wording. And this really comes into play in calculus. If they ask for the intercepts, they aren't asking you for just the x coordinate. They're asking for the y coordinate. So the right answer for this would probably be 1.40.
x and y, and 2.60. And my open math, of course, is very picky with this kind of thing. Sometimes they'll say x equals, sometimes they'll say write the coordinates, right? Both of them. So you gotta pay attention to what's being asked. Now we're getting into inequalities, which means there's gonna be more than one answer. So let's let's approach this graphically for a minute. Um, I see an absolute value function that's been shifted right one up one, so that's where the vertex is, and then it's been stretched vertically by a factor of three. So one, two, three. So it's going to be here and here, and then I can go over one to here and here. And I'm kind of I don't have graph paper, so I'm just kind of kind of kind of wing it. And then greater than seven. So here is this line y equals seven. And I want to know when is this graph above that line? So I'm seeing, let's see here. I'm looking for that range and that range and how it corresponds to this X and this X. So I'm going to say anything less than that X puts the absolute value graph above that line, Y equals seven. And anything greater than this X puts that graph above that line y equals seven. So you notice the way I said less than and greater than? So we're gonna use that to, to, to solve this. So what we're gonna do first off is we're gonna isolate the isolate that absolute value again. I'll always isolate that absolute value. Let's see. So that's gonna give me the absolute value of x minus one. Let's see, so I'm gonna subtract one, which is six, divide by three, which is two. So I want to know when does x minus 1? Now, remember when I said less than? I'm going to say less than negative 2. Now, I don't know if it's negative 2, but I know it's less than whatever, less than a negative. And x minus 1 has to be greater than the positive. So flip the inequality, change the sign. And keep one of them exactly the same. So x, I'll add 1 to both sides. So what is that? Add one, so it's negative one. So when x is less than negative one, and we'll add one, add one, x is greater than three. And of course, because you've already studied interval notation, uh, my open math is probably gonna look for the answer this way, negative infinity until negative one, and it's open at negative one because it's not equal to, and I'll say u uh, three to infinity. Okay, so that's how you solve an absolute value graph that's greater than. Here is the same question being asked in a different way. We want to know when is it above zero. So we'll just say, we'll write, we'll write this equation. We'll say zero uh, is actually greater than zero. So because it's to the left, I'm going to say left less than zero. So zero has to be less than the function. I could have saved myself a lot of hassle and just written it this way. Absolute value of x minus 3 minus 5 is greater than 0 because that's certainly all right to do. I just I started that way, so I better finish it. So I'm going to keep rolling over here. I'm going to say uh, absolute value of x minus 3 is greater than positive 5. So do the same deal. x minus 3 has to be less than negative 5 and x minus three has to be greater than positive five. One of them the same, one of them you flip. So x is greater than what? Negative two, and x has to be greater than eight. And of course, my open math would be looking for this um, negative infinity to negative two, open it both, because it's only equal to, it's not equal to, or uh, eight to infinity. Now, just because I didn't give you one of these examples, I want to do one. What if they said x minus 3 has to be less than 5? Well, this graph is going to look like this. And less than 5 is here. So I want to know when does the graph is it below that? What x values make it below that? So it's going to be more than this x and less than this x. Now, because this is gonna be in between these two numbers, 
you could certainly do it just like what we're doing, write your two functions and get it, but you're gonna have, this is called a conjunction because there's overlap here. Um, so sometimes it's easier to do it this way, and you might have seen that this before. I'm gonna say negative five, that's the lower one, is less than the x minus three, which is less than the upper one. And so instead of having two equations, I can just solve one, it's a compound inequality, and I'll add three, I'll add three, I'll add three. So negative two is less than x, which is less than eight. And so that's an in-between kind of situation. And if we're gonna do an interval notation, it would just be negative two to eight. Okay, so that can save you some, that can save you some headache if, if you think about these less than or, or, uh, or uh, these conjunctions or you just write them as a compound inequality. Long enough video, I'll get this online and, and uh, let's get rolling with it.